Hey folks, welcome to this brief but more lengthy than one minute Kuleana video. I'm going to be giving Kuleana to magical fluid processes who, although I can't see it from my YouTube analytics, I know they've been a subscriber for a long time, at least a year, at, le at least a year. So the reason why I'm doing this video is to make a point about who's going to learn this, who isn't, about spoon feeding, and about doing your own work. My regular viewers are probably sick of hearing me say this. However, the students that have reached a rudimentary closure or a very advanced level of closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, will definitely be nodding their heads in agreement because they know what it takes to learn this. So they say, time and space are functions of one's conceptual scheme. So what, what are, in essence are they saying, using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble? Time and space are functions of one's conceptual scheme. Well, one has concepts, one develops concepts. How does one do that? One has data come into its port of sensation their sensory, and then they formulate that data into knowledge. And then they transship it out as claims. Or they make a scheme, like they're saying, a schematic, not in the sense of an underhanded conspiracy or something like that, but they make a schematic of these concepts. So right off the bat, I'm looking at this thinking, if you're looking at it like that, for whatever reason why you're looking at this, I don't know because it's uh, posted on a, a post that I put up that said, as most folks coming with the common law domain, I just made a comment about Dr. Barry, uh, the other drama that's been going on. Uh, I just made a comment about them, and this comment right here really has nothing to do with it. I don't know why Magical Fluid Process has decided to say this because it has, it is not relevant or congruent with the post that they're commenting on. Maybe they just felt like saying something out of the blue and this was the venue they chose to do it. So, you know, sometimes I find uh, value in doing things like this and others can learn from it, including myself. So my kuleana was time does not exist and is in and of itself a particle of negation. Look it up. Space is dependent upon the perceiver, which is basically what I just said to you. So then they said, time and space are two sides of the same coin. What coin is that? Show me that coin. I mean, you're welcome to your opinion. Thanks for sharing. But in the domain of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, one and one is one. And that does not compute. However, in the fiction... It can be whatever you want, which obviously it is for magic fluid processes. And they said, if time does not exist beyond one's conceptual scheme, as I said, low-key condescension there, then neither does space. Again, as I said, laughing face. So I guess maybe they think they're being cute. I don't know. So they're saying... And, and this is a logical fallacy, folks. Look it up. It's the either-or logical fallacy. They're giving, uh, it can e either this or it's that. So since in their opinion, time and space are two sides of the same coin, I do not have a coin near me. I guess we could use this rock. Okay? Two sides of the same rock. If you take one side away, you take the whole rock away, and now nothing exists. That's basically what they're saying, which is complete and utter balderdash. But maybe it is for them. I don't know. Wherever they come from, whatever they do. But it definitely has nothing to do with the domain of fact. I would be much obliged if you could briefly explain why time is a particle of negation, though. Well, instead of you being obliged to me, instead of you owing me anything, that data is available for free on this YouTube channel in the Parse playlist if you would actually take the time to study. I'm not going to spoon feed you. 
Any grammar question you have can be answered just by studying the videos. It's that simple. There is no grammar question that you can ask that has not already been answered. And um, I already said, like you said, as I said, right here, I say, look it up. I already suggested for you to look it up. Did you miss that part? Or maybe you don't know how to look it up. Maybe you don't know how to parse words. I don't know. What I did take into account is that you are a longtime subscriber. So I'm thinking, well, if they've been subscribed for that long, then I'd have to guess that they have at least a teeny tiny bit of knowledge under their belt. So they would know what I mean when I say look it up. And they would know how to parse words, how to look it up in an etymology dictionary, go to the earliest nativity root meaning and go from there. You would think. But that guess, as it turns out, is not correct. Because then they go on to say, Hi, Jason. Is there a place for particles of negation such as apple? The fruit, not the company. What al alternative word would one use for apple? A vowel, a, two consonants, or particles of negation, question mark. So here's my kuleana to them. I said, as I suggested, as I said, look it up for yourself. Are you familiar with quantum grammar and how to parse words? If you are, then you know you can look it up by yourself in any etymology dictionary and verify it for yourself. By the way, nothing exists beyond one's conceptual scheme, if that's how you choose to view it, not limited to time or space. And then I say, I see that you are either new to correct sentence structure or you just haven't studied the mechanics of the technology. Please refer to my Parse playlist so you may answer your own question. Any grammar question you have may be answered by investing your time in studying the 900-ish videos on my channel. I've actually answered your question countless times in countless videos, referring to the particle of negation. Or, if you are actually serious about learning correct sentence structure, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and reply for a workshop. They won't. They won't, because I'm pretty sure I've made the same offer to them before, and they won't even share their correct name as far as I can remember. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you is it's just an example of a longtime subscriber that with my using a little bit of my imagination, they just happened onto this post, just decided to post something time and space are functions of one conceptual, conceptual scheme apropos of nothing. Right? It's not relevant to the post. I mean, directly relative or specifically relative or concerned with it. It's just something out of the blue. They decide to say that. But it's uh, for me, it's a blessing that they did because then it offered me the opportunity to make this Kuleana video to basically show you folks, this is an example of someone who has not done their homework, is not doing their homework, does seem a little bit curious, but just doesn't seem to want to put forth any effort. They just want me to hand, hand over the answers to their questions. Now, I'm not really, because the answers are already here on this channel. I have literally invested thousands of hours in creating, editing, and publishing the 900 or so videos on this channel. Literally. Literally my gift to you and yet folks will just come on here and be like hey uh, why is a vowel in front of a consonant a particle of negation do we use particles of negation in quantum grammar <laughs> folks i'll give you a little hint if you look up time in an etymology dictionary you will find that it means something that is not whole. I'm paraphrasing, all right? It doesn't say that, it says something else, but the conclusion is, it is not whole. And in correct sentence structure, communication, Parsi syntax, grammar, one and one is one. Rule one, rule equal. You have to have the whole of the matter in order to be able to certify something as a fact. And time does not possess those qualities. But you have to look it up, folks. You have to do the work. Period. End of story. So I hope magic fluid processes 
doesn't get too butthurt over this. And if they do, I mean, I don't know. I, they, they don't seem very serious about learning this grammar at all. They've never contacted me to the best of my knowledge. And the knowledge level they express here is no different than the knowledge level they expressed in their comments from a year or more ago, to the best of my knowledge. Again, best of my memory, I could be wrong. Don't quote me. I'm just going on memory. Thanks for joining me, folks. I'll see you in the next one.